So I'm on the record as stating that the college football Super League proposal stinks. And it's never going to come to fruition. And it's really not even a threat to be talked about seriously. Because it doesn't have the backing of the Big Ten, the SEC, or Fox and ESPN, which are the three entities that you have to have if you're going to try to break away from the NCAA and create your own thing. They don't have that, so it's not really something that you got to worry about really happening. But it's not going to stop me from talking about it today because Sportico did some deep dives and found the slideshow that was presented that to the group that calling themselves College Sports Tomorrow, to their credit, they put together kind of a a pitch deck, if you will, of here is what this thing would look like that had the eight team or the 10, eight, no, the eight, 10 team divisions. Sorry. The 10, damn it. The eight, 10 team divisions that everybody would be broken up into. And then what the NIL would look like, what the scholarships would look like, what the schedule would look like, what the playoff would look like. So to their credit, they went through and did all of their stuff. They put together a really good proposal in their minds. I am here humbly to tear it all down and tell you why it gets worse. Then I was just telling you it stunk off the idea of, okay, if Syracuse and West Virginia, if those presidents are the ones that are kind of leading the charge, and, and I had a commenter say something along the lines of like, well, they're operating outside of their roles as chancellor and president. No, they're not. No, they're not. They are operating under the guise of like, holy crap, this whole thing is about to go down. The ship is sinking, and I got to make damn sure I get my university on a lifeboat. How do we do it? Let's control the lifeboats. It's a great idea. It's a fantastic, fantastic exercise in self-preservation. You can argue all you'd like that, well, they're not operating as the chancellor of Syracuse and the president of West Virginia. Yeah, they are, because that's their job. I was just operating under the guise of, like, if Syracuse and West Virginia are the ones trying to drive the bus of, let's break away from the NCAA, it's not going to work. It has to come from the top, from the upper echelons. Alabama, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Texas, Oklahoma, USC, Florida, Georgia, LSU, Penn State, Michigan aren't going to be like, yeah, you know what? Let's link up with West Virginia and Syracuse to start something new. That's just not the way it's going to go. So I was just telling you it sucked from that perspective. But now that we've got a look at the 11 slides of what the proposal actually looked like, it is infinitely worse. First of all, let's look at the divisions. Um, so there are eight, 10 team divisions. If I can get that right. The West is essentially the pac 10 Arizona, Arizona state, Cal, Oregon, Oregon state, Stanford, UCLA, USC, Washington, Washington state. I don't think anybody balks at that. I think that works. The Southwest, I think the one team that's going to have a problem with it is Arkansas in this proposal. It's Arkansas, Baylor, Houston, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, SMU, TCU, Texas, Texas A&M, and Texas Tech. So Arkansas is like, well, wait a second. I've been in the SEC now for like 30 years. I would like to play LSU, and I'd like to play Alabama. I'd like to play Auburn. I'd like to play some of the schools that we've gotten used to playing in the SEC, and now they're going back to the old Southwest Conference in this uh, scenario. I don't think they like it that much. The Plains, I love the Plains division because it stretches from Wisconsin to Wisconsin and Iowa and Kansas to Utah. It's BYU, Colorado, Iowa, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Minnesota, Nebraska, Utah, Wisconsin. That, and and it's part of, if you're going based on geography, um, just if you you were not aware, nobody lives (laughs) from about eastern Kansas and Nebraska and North Dakota, South Dakota, that kind of like I-35 area. Nobody lives from there until you get to Denver. All right. Like there's a big gaping gap of the country that just nobody lives in. 
And so there's not a whole lot of great options there in the Plains area. And if you're going to do 10 team divisions, you can't put BYU and Utah and Colorado in the same arena as the West because you can't shove the West anywhere else. It just it doesn't work. But to their credit, they tried. The Midwest, um, there's some interesting. Cincinnati, Illinois, Indiana, Louisville, Michigan, Michigan State, Missouri, Northwestern, Ohio State, Purdue. So <laughs> there are – it's a smattering of not great if you are Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. The teams that those three schools would love to not really play in the Big Ten include Illinois, Indiana, Northwestern, and Purdue. And you're now grouped with them along with Cincinnati, who Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State will view as inferior. Uh, Louisville, who Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State would view as inferior. And Missouri, who if Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State had any interest in being in the Big Ten, they already would have been there. So the Midwest one is a rough one. The Northeast works kind of. Boston College, Maryland, Notre Dame, Penn State, Pitt, Rutgers, Syracuse, Virginia, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. Like that might be that that might be like the best after the West. The West just works. The West is the Pac-10. All right, nobody's no, nobody's. I mean, it worked for fifty years. We can bring that back. The Northeast Conference there. That's a nice football. That's a nice every sport conference. BC, Maryland, Notre Dame, Penn State, Pitt, Rutgers, Syracuse, Virginia, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. That's a nice college football conference that has interest from the the regional schools. It has um, programs who are kind of spending about the same amount of money at, at college football that are going to be somewhat competitive. Are there national powers in there? Yeah, you get Notre Dame and Penn State, and that's going to be viewed as a pretty good conference. But then... Um, the idea of like the Midwest being including Cincinnati, Louisville, Indiana, Northwestern, Purdue, while the Northeast has Notre Dame, Penn State, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, et cetera. It's like, oh, well, also, by the way, um, I think so. Cincinnati is east of Notre Dame, Indiana is. Probably not technically east of Notre Dame, but it's real close. Louisville, I think, is east of Notre Dame. Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State are all east of Notre Dame. And you're going to put Notre Dame in the northeast. It's one of the, it's the, like, if you're going to do something based on geography, NFC East. If you're going to do something based on geography, NFC East, you can't have the Dallas Cowboys. In your like, if you're going to base it on geography, the Indianapolis Colts can't be in the AFC South. I don't care that like, well, Notre Dame works in the Northeast because there's a bunch of Irish Catholics. Well, that's great. Sorry, but if we're doing this by geography, you have to act as if you've seen a damn map before. So Notre Dame can't be in the Northeast. The Southeast and South are essentially the ACC and SEC. Um, just kind of, there's just small tweaks of Georgia Tech would be in the SEC uh, and Miami. And or Florida, I beg your pardon, uh, would be Florida, South Carolina would be in the ACC. That's pretty much it. And then you get the teams that and by the way, those 70 teams in those seven divisions, the West, Southwest Plains, Midwest, Northeast, Southeast, South, they can't be relegated, which is another part of the idea that I thought was just stupid uh, of your college Super League proposals. Like, OK, we're going to have relegation. There's going to be 80 teams in the league, but 70 of them can't be relegated. Like, oh, okay. So then that's not what relegation means at all. Like the whole point is everybody is susceptible to being booted at some point. And yet it was like, well, we're going to have relegation. No, you're not. But the teams that are in the relegation division, Boise State, James Madison, Liberty, Miami, New Mexico State, Toledo, Troy, Tulane, UNLV, UTSA. Those are the schools that will be fighting in the 10 spots in the College Football Super League. So just on geography alone, some of those stink. And if you're going to if, if you're trying to get and when I mentioned earlier, when you don't have the big dogs on board, when it's Syracuse and West Virginia trying to drive the bus, if you present this to the big dogs of 
all right, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. The reason you should get on board with this is because you're going to be playing Louisville, Indiana, Illinois, Northwestern, and Purdue all of the time, or Texas and Oklahoma. We're going to put SMU and TCU and Texas Tech and Houston and Baylor on your schedule. If those schools wanted to play those schools all the time, they do it. It's really that simple. If Florida wanted to be in the ACC, they do it. <laughs> like it's, if you look at the, if, if Georgia Tech wanted to be in the SEC, they would have stayed in the SEC. So this idea that like, okay, the way we're going to get everybody on board is we're going to pair you with schools you don't want to be paired with. What? It just doesn't make any sense. So that part of it stinks. The calendar, I actually like. They had said, we're going to put together a 14-game regular season uh, with one bye week. It starts in August. It ends Thanksgiving weekend, which I am somewhat a fan of. I, I used to appreciate that like Ohio State, Michigan was the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Now it's it, Thanksgiving weekend. It, it's an important football weekend, obviously. So 14-game regular season, one bye week. Goes from August to Thanksgiving weekend, then a 16 team playoff. And then that it would grow to 24 teams. And I think if you're going to have 80 teams in your Super League, you got to have probably 24 teams. And then there would also be a college football spring festival. So there'd be 40 games, right? Of, um, there would be 40 games. 40 spring games basically against one another. And you would basically have your buy games, your, your, your BUI, not BYE, your buy games in the spring for your spring league teams in April of the Super League and make that all work. But the worst part of this, the worst part of this, oh my goodness, the worst part of this, they want to put 85 roster spots per team. Not 85 scholarships, 85 roster spots. They want to limit scholarships to 70 scholarships. So they want to cut 15 scholarships per team. I got to figure out uh, what the math is on that. Hey, Alexa, what's 80 times 15? 80 times 15 is 1,200. They really that high? So 1,200 kids every year don't get to go to college for free because they want to institute scholarship limits. There, there should be more opportunities for kids. Like right now, you get 85 scholarships. They want to say you get 85 roster slots. You get 70 scholarships and 15 walk-ons. That is preposterous. You're going to take 1,200 scholarships away every year. Now, I'm sure the, the, the trade-off to that is, well, we're going to give these kids NIL money. And the way they had it figured out was that 5% of freshmen would get, they would take the TV money, portion it up. 5% goes to freshmen, 15% to sophomores, 30% to juniors, 50% for seniors and grad students. And then it also has, a, hey, we're going to limit how many times you can transfer in a five-year period, et cetera. I don't have really strong feelings about that. If, like, I think you should be able to transfer twice in a five-year period, and it should be fine. But the idea that you're going to take 1,200, 1,200, the town I grew up in is less than 1,200 people. So everybody in that town would not have been able to go to college for free because the college football, like, what's the point of that? FCS programs are bordering on 70, on 70 scholarships. So why are Alabama and Texas and Florida and Georgia and Penn State and Notre Dame and Arizona and Oregon and Georgia, Georgia Tech going to agree to cut 15 scholarships? That is the worst part of the proposal. It makes no, no sense. Because all you're doing really is kind of just filtering down. Because that's 1,200 kids who would have went to big-time college football. All that's going to do is strengthen the FCS, Division II, Division III, NAIA. So it just has this trickle-down effect where eventually colleges aren't getting football players 
or there's not enough opportunities for football players, I should say, at colleges, which I think is a bad thing. <laughs> Why would you want to? It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So from the get-go, I told you, I think this kind of sucks. And now that you've got a really kind of good look at it, how it would have worked if they got their way to put it all together, I think it really sucks. And I'm glad it really doesn't have a chance at getting off the ground. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. I appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing. So if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all that great college football content that's coming out of Saturday Glory. If you're listening on a podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of the Daily Huddle here on Saturday Glory.